right over here. There you go. Here's why that may that may illustrate perfectly for me my favorite part of this conference. You know, we're all dreamers, builders. We're doing great things in our own rights. But here's what's awesome, man. Scott and I, and we have a, we have a kind of formed some sort of a bond over the last couple of years, and I cannot do what he does. I can't do it. I can't make that. I can't create it. I can't do it. And so I have this amazing respect for him. And I know that Scott has said the same things about, man, I, can't, I don't know how you get up there and you just talk and you come up with stuff. I don't know how you do it. And so, I mean, I mean, I know that the talks have been spiritual, but I mean, man, God has just created each of us in such a way that it's like, I, I'm not better than you and you're not better than me, but dang, you're good and I'm good and this is good. So let's be good together and do what we're made to do, man, like you're saying. So anyway, sorry. I'm like a preachy. Mm, mm. Brett, did you bring an organ or something? Man, all right. We'll put that music to work. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Woo! All right. Man, I'm getting fired up. All right. Our savvy, sassy, and soulful speaker helps femapreneurs. Did I get that right, Jen? Wherever you are. Did I say it right? Did I pronounce it correctly? Femapreneurs master their mind so they can have happy and healthy relationships, both personally and professionally. Less sugar and more spice. This might be my favorite bio yet. It's awesome. Less sugar and more spice. Her gift for intuitive and strategic guidance keeps these ladies' businesses running authentically and in alignment too. Not only a certified relationship specialist with a BFA in communication, she is a mindfulness practitioner and teacher with a passion for transpersonal psychology. Ladies and gentlemen, helping us overcome hustle ad, Jen Moff. Hello, hello. Hello! Good morning. Yeah, it is morning. It is morning. Okay, can you hear me okay? I know it's green. Scott took a look at my butt and told me it was. So. That depends if you think it's an issue, Kristen. I personally don't. Okay. Welcome. I'm so glad to be here with all of you today. Um, last summer, I experienced a radical shift that left me completely abandoning the brand that I was building and confronted a core belief that I had. And in the fall, I found myself uncertain about where to go and what to do, and there was so much new things coming into my life. I was part of a new mastermind. I was experiencing some of the new social media tools like Periscope and Blab, and man, those were fun. I had the traditional stuff of articles and blogs and, and videos on YouTube and all sorts of people that I was meeting in these Facebook groups as like different distractions, and I was like, I, I don't, I'm, 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 I'm getting a little frazzled. I'm pulled all over the place. I, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. And I discovered the temptress from Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey had paid me a visit. I was experiencing what I like to call hustle ADD. That was for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, ADD, yes. Do you, do you know how to call 911? That I'm a little concerned about. Okay. We're all here to learn from and support each other. And you guys are some of the most encouraging people that I've come across in my life. But that doesn't stop us from, you know, experiencing the human condition. We worry. We get nervous. We compare. Maybe some of us out there struggle with perfectionism or imposter syndrome. And then there's those of us who really feel the need to impress. And then maybe there's some of us that feel very driven to conquer just to earn respect. And these are all ways that the temptress can come into our lives. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jen, and I'm a self-professed personal growth junkie. And um, as Jared mentioned, I help heart-centered fempreneurs succeed and achieve freedom and fulfillment in work and love. And today, I'm here to help you guys get a little bit of clarity. I'll share some stories, yes, 
and I'll provide some space for transformation, but I'll also provide some tactical tools that you guys can implement today. So, you too can overcome Hustle ADD. By the end of today's session, you will learn if you have been visited by the temptress and in what ways she may show up. You'll discover my three tips to get laser focused in your work or in your life. And finally, you're going to get some tactical tools to move forward. Okay? How does that sound? Ooh. Wonderful. Okay. So before we get too deep into that, I want to tell you a little bit about how I discovered the temptress was at work in my life. So I told you about last summer. I told you about last fall. Well, in October, I was working with a coach, and we uncovered during one of the sessions that I was really focused on identifying myself and putting myself in this box and labeling myself. And I was like, am I a coach? I really don't like that word. Um, well, I don't do consulting per se. What is it that I do? How do I explain what I do? Ugh. Like, you should have just seen me wallowing around, no pants in my apartment, talking to Cal, my cat, for those of you that don't know. I don't have a, a cow in my apartment. Um, I just, I had no idea what to do. And so I kept trying these things on for example, on Twitter. And I was like, let me just change my bio and see how I feel about that. Now I'll change it today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. What about this? I probably change it like every single day for like a month. Until finally I'm talking to this woman and she helps me uncover that I have a subconscious belief that if I don't understand how to put myself in a box, how to label myself, that other people will not understand. And if other people do not understand, then I will not exist. They will not see me, and I won't be worthy of existing. And that was a huge and radical shift for me. The temptress had used a very painful inner child wounding to keep me distracted, to Keep me from moving forward. Now, there's other ways the temptress can work. And maybe in your life, it's a little bit different for you. In the book, The E-Myth Revisited, the author talks very clearly about the difference between working in your business and on your business. And so for those of you that don't know, working in your business is doing things like creating content, marketing, accounting, sales, customer service, working with your clients, creating products. Working on your business is the dreaming, the planning, the goal setting, the idea generation, just thinking about the future and the possibilities. And the temptress loves, loves the latter because it keeps us distracted and from actually moving forward. Another way she might show up, social media. Mm, I heard some. <laughs> yes, she, she, um, she likes it there. That's, that's one of her new favorite homes. Oh my gosh, I have got 13,000 followers on Twitter, guys. I, I just feel so blessed and excited to have all these people following me. People liked my new business page on Facebook. I mean, it's just really validating to know that I, I am reaching so many people. Oh my gosh, I got so many likes on that new photo. Oh my God, it's so cool. <laughs> like, every time we get a like or a comment or whatever, you know, the currency of that platform is, dopamine gets released in our brain, just like with drugs. And our brain and our ego and our mind is like, yes, feed me, give me more. <coughs> and so then we get on this cycle of feeding that. And the temptress just loves it. She thrives on it, actually. So now that we understand a little bit more about the temptress, how she works, let's learn what it means to stay focused, to stay on the course, and how that can manifest in your business, your calling, your brand, and in your life. A couple of years ago, 
when I decided I was going to start down this journey of entrepreneurship online. I moved to Gainesville and found out that there was a professional speaker and consultant local to the area. Um, he's a New York Times bestselling author, wrote the book Awesomely Simple. His name is John Spence, good friends with Kai, Kai Kawasaki, and speaks regularly for Apple. And I was lucky enough to sit down with him over breakfast. And we're sitting there, you know, shooting the shit, talking about our eggs and how we like them over easy. And I pull out this eight page packet and it's an article that he wrote of the top eight things that he suggests to people that come to him asking, I want to be a speaker too. I want to do what you do. And I'm showing him this and I said, I have no problem with the hard work. I have no problem with the lean startup. I have no problem with the customer service. None of these. My problems with the very first thing. He said, you've got to be laser focused about what it is that you're trying to achieve. And I said, I, I like so many things. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and um, he gave me some suggestions, which honestly, I don't even remember to this day because the temptress was like, yeah, she's, I got her good. Mm -hmm. And it showed up again a couple of years later, just last fall. Now, we know what laser focused is. It's being clear. It's knowing exactly what you're doing. And I would describe where I was last fall as being deluded. Not like, oh, she's deluded. <laughs> but I had a diluted focus, meaning it was unclear. And that was because I had my hand in so many different things and I was pulled in all these different directions. A great example I was told of that is Shalene Johnson. Yes, she does some amazing stuff. She's got an amazing fan base, but she does Instagram training. She does Pio. She does, you know, her podcast. She's got so many things that are not always seen as congruent, and she's experienced major burnout in her life. When you are focused, it's easier to take care of yourself and to move forward. So if you have found yourself to be in a bit of the fuzzy, diluted, unclear state. There's three ways that you can make sure that you get yourself clear and focused. And this works whether it's business or life, okay? Number one, you really must cultivate your intuition. You've got to know what your heart and soul is telling you. When we get too stuck in our heads, we're not connected to our body, and we can't know for sure what it's telling us. You have to be able to listen. Number two, you must, 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 must develop and enforce boundaries. You need to know what you're protecting, what you say yes to, what you say no to. If I tell every single one of you, I love you, how much weight does that I love you have? Not as much as if I said it to one of you. It's the same thing with your yes and your no. When you know very clearly what you will and you will not do, any external things that may come at you, you'll be able to more clearly say, that is not in line with my vision. I will not get distracted. And you can say no out of respect for yourself and what's been put in your life to focus on. And number three, finally, assertive communication. To speak assertively, is to articulate your wants and needs without guilt or apology. It's not aggressive where you're infringing on someone else's wants and needs, and it's not passive where you're beating around the bush about something, and then resentment develops. Getting all of this information is extremely necessary for the evolution of whatever it is that you're trying to develop in your life. But as we all know, the how is just as important as the wow. So let's get a little tactical, shall we? Okay. So I want you to raise your hand, okay, if this applies to you. This is not Simon Says. <laughs> if this applies to you, raise your hand. If you are not sure who it is that you're actually helping, or you think 
you're helping everybody in what it is that your calling is related to. Raise your hand. Got a couple? Yeah, okay. As we said before, if you're trying to help everybody or you don't know who you're helping, the answer is you're not really helping anybody. Because what's really powerful is when somebody can say, me too. Those me too moments are what connect us and drive further development of relationships. So, what you need to do, starting with, is developing an avatar or an ideal client. And this is where you want to pretend like you're a writer, for those of you that aren't. And really come up with as detailed an idea of what this person's name is, where they work, where they go to school, what they look like, where they shop, their income, their job, their family situation, pain points from childhood that they've overcome. You need to create a vision of who this person is. And a tool that I used back when I was involved heavily in theater, when we were doing character development, say I was playing Mary Poppins or something, I'd get the script and I would look through all of the lines that Mary had about herself and write them down. I would look through the script and see all the lines that other characters had talking about how Mary Poppins is and write them down. I would also look through the blocking in the stage directions to see what the author said was significant that she should know. And then I'd look in the glossary or the index to see what maybe character development the author had wanted us to know. And I'd look at this sheet and see all of these tools and things come together so I'd know who this person is. I didn't realize it at the time, but this was a really powerful exercise in cultivating empathy and really getting into other people's heads, okay? And granted, you guys don't have scripts to life. That's not reality. But you do have other tools. You have social media. You have the ability to go onto Amazon and look up books that are similar to what you care about, what you feel aligned with, and look at the comments and see what other people are saying in articles and really observe what other people are talking about to gather that qualitative data. Okay, I hope that helps you guys. Who here, raise your hand, if you feel resistance to self-promotion? I thought this one was going to get a lot of hands. Okay. How many of you would rather avoid doing that if you had to? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So this is what I'm going to tell you is something that I learned, and it was really transformative for me, and I hope that it does that for you too. In the spirit of the hero's journey and what we're learning this weekend, as Rick mentioned yesterday at the end of the day in his talk, he was hearing the call and hearing the call and hearing the call, but he, he didn't answer for a while, but he finally answered. The point was he heard the call. When we market what we have been given to market, we are placing the call out for someone else to be able to answer. If we do not do that, we are doing a disservice to them and their journey because just as we are heroes of our own, we are very connected to everyone else around us. And we don't know how we're going to be used to impact their journey. And finally, I'd like you to raise your hand if you tend to be focused on vanity metrics. Nobody? One, two, three, four, yeah, okay. Checking your stats, analytics, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, the next step for you guys would be to develop a service structure. I learned this the hard way. I got so stuck on, I need a logo, I need a website, I need a Facebook page, I need this, I need all these things. Again, distractions. You don't need any of that. You just need a service or product structure. You need to answer these questions. What is it that you're offering? How do people get it? What do you want people to do after they get it? and create a flow chart, create a system, create something so that your brain has a path to follow. I hope that helps you as well. Today, we were able to determine if the temptress had visited you and if so, ways she might be lurking we learned three great tips on how to get very clear 
and focused in your life and in your launch. And I gave you some very specific tactical action steps based on how the temptress may show up in your life and how to wait and ways how to move forward. I have a test for you. to see how committed you are to overcoming your own hustle ADD. Should you accept, during the next break, I'd like you to come visit me over at my table. I have a tool for you to help you on your journey. Do you accept? Thank you.